So today I'm going to answer the question, what does jazz music do to the brain? It's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people think that it messes up the brain quite a lot because some people think it's a little complicated, and that may be the case, but it is a great music and it does a lot of things to the brain. And I'm going to talk about some of those things, most of them being good and this comes from a lot of scientific studies and basically what jazz does to the musician brain and also to the listener brain. And we're gonna get started in just a second. All right, so today we're talking about what jazz music does to the brain. So let's first talk about it as a listener. So whether you're a jazz enthusiast or just somebody who has heard jazz once in a while, jazz is a type of music that is mostly improvised. Not only that, there's an interplay between all of the musicians. So there's a conversation going on. For example, I used to do a lot of trio playing and there would always be a conversation between me and the bass player and the drummer would be doing his thing and keeping us all together and all going with the rhythm. And to the listener, that interplay and that conversation is almost like understanding another language. So the listener gets challenged in the way that they hear music. And that's always good for the brain. When the brain is challenged, then it tends to get bigger. It tends to grow and learn and comprehend and all of the good things that the brain is supposed to be doing, it's doing when it's listening to music. And the second thing is that uh, it transports you away from everything else. So let's say you've got a lot of stuff going on in your life, things aren't going that well, and you walk into a jazz club you're immediately transported into another world and the brain gets a break. And of course, anytime the brain can be pulled away from its obsessions with things going wrong or being stressed out or overwhelmed. So that whole experience is really good for the brain because again, it, it gives you a break. So that's what the listener enjoys. Let's talk about the jazz musician myself included in that group, of course. And I'm gonna talk about six things that jazz music does to the brain. So if you're thinking, I'm, I'm a musician now and I wanna start learning jazz, is that going to make me smarter? Is that going to improve my, my brain functions? And the answer is absolutely, and this is proven scientifically. So the first thing it does is it creates a superior working memory. One of the things that jazz players are really, really good at, it's memor memory and, and memorizing things and being able to recall them because they're not just remem remembering where the fingers go, such as in classical music or putting up a piece of sheet music, they remember how the music is put together. So the working memory is a little bit different because it hears melody, but it's also trying to discover within that melody, new ways of, of playing it. So let me give you an example. I'm gonna pull out something from the past, say, Blue Skies, okay? Let's do it in D minor. And there's, it's pretty simple melody. And what I'm going to do is just play the melody first and then the brain, because of its superior working memory, it's going to remember other things to do with it. So. Let's see what this sounds like.
So that's pretty cool. You've got the melody, but then because you have this working memory and the brain remembers where, where the sound goes and where new melodies are and the, the concept of discovery, it's really just this combination of creativity, mental ability, uh, there's even emotion obviously in there. You could see me maybe enjoying myself. Okay, so that that's really the initial stages. If, if you do this long term as a player, you start to get increased obviously auditory skills. You're able to hear music from the inside out. You're able to decipher where all the instruments are at one time. You can listen to the bass and pick that out. You can listen to the, the saxophone and pick that out, or even amongst a group of saxophone players, you can hear each one trying to discern the harmonies between each. And then the next thing is this concept of cognitive flexibility. So you saw some examples of that with Blue Skies, the flexibility to, uh, for the brain to discover and be creative. It's, it's flexible, it's, just, it's not confined to one specific thing. So there's always this creative element where the brain is trying to flex its muscle on where it wants to go next. So even if we do Blue Skies again, it's never gonna be the same. And the, the fingers, and the brain are just kind of having this conversation together. And that brings you to the, the motor control. And so the, the musician, the jazz musician, has this sort of advanced motor control where the fingers have muscle memory and the brain is controlling not only where those muscles go, it's almost like second nature, a sixth sense. Um, not the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind. The subconscious is controlling the creative elements and your fingers have this motor control and the ability to go where you kind of want it to go and sometimes go on, on its own. Okay, the next thing is the concept of spatial coordination. So if you, if you take a look at the keys of the piano, we have 88 of them and there are patterns. So you can see that there's two black notes, three black notes, two black notes, three black notes, it's repeated throughout. And then how the white notes fit around those black notes. That's spatial coordination. It helps you understand that the fingers find their way as the brain and the eyes direct them. Now, you must know that there's a lot of musicians who don't have sight that play equally as well and sometimes better than musicians that do. But it's not sight that controls spatial coordination, it's the way that the fingers are spaced and, and the chords. So if we were to just play the chords of Blue Skies, it would be something like this. That's spatial coordination, finding good voicings, finding places to go. And that's really good for the brain. And then finally, there, I, I've learned of late that there's something called the corpus callosum, which is the ligaments or the, I'm not exactly sure what it is, between the two sides of the brain. And it it's the, the filtration system, the communication system between the left brain and the right brain, the left brain being logic and the right brain being creative. So there's this constant firing back and forth. And it has been proven that musicians have a larger corpus callosum. And it's because of that conversation going back and forth between logic and creative. So that's a little bit about what uh, jazz music does to the brain. So whether you're a listener or a musician, Obviously the musician, I think that the brain has uh, 
more capacity to grow as, as a musician, but it's, it's just as good. It's just as powerful for, for listeners. So if you really want your brain to grow and you really want a, a healthy brain, jazz is where it's at. Thanks for spending a little time with me. It's Paul Toby. This is a fairly new YouTube channel and we'd be really grateful if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So we'll be adding about five videos a week, just like this one. The videos are mainly focused on technical skills development, recording tips, and even professional and business development for musicians like you who want some help from a professional musician like myself. So I've toured 17 different countries, made eight albums, was signed to a really good label, and made a full-time living as a professional artist. So I know and I'm confident that I can be a great resource for you. Subscribe now and I'll see you in another video.